It comes when you least expect it. It lives in your nightmares, building anxiety and paralyzing fear. It is so real. You're terrified. It needs to be stopped. Whatever was in the house was evil. It wanted to destroy my family. Before it's too late. Angela was fighting for her soul. If I didn't do something now, I could end up dead. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In 2010, Angela Jasmine suffers through the same recurring nightmare she's been having since she was 13. I never saw her face. I could only see the long hair and the black flowy thing. And she floated. You're totally petrified, and you don't know what to do. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me. The only thing that makes it disappear is a prayer her mother Jesus, taught her as a child. Jesus, Jesus, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, help me, please save me. Jesus, please help me, please save me. As soon as I said, Jesus, help me, please help me, it would vanish just like that and I could wake up. Honey, you up? Got you some breakfast? I'll be down in a second. <sighs> Lately, the dark dream has become more frequent and disturbing during what is supposed to be a happy time in Angela's life. Hey, babe, did you hear me? I got breakfast ready. OK. Angela and Steve are newlyweds who recently moved in together. After I got married to Steve, things started getting worse. Night after night, it would come, and it was like I was totally under attack. But although Angela feels close to Steve, she's chosen not to tell him. You OK? Yeah, yeah. I would not tell anybody about it, because if I told somebody about it, then it would kind of make it more real to me and make me have to face it. And I didn't ever want to face it. I just wanted to forget about it. I'll be right down. OK. She wants some pancakes. You better hustle, though. You know the way Tyler goes soon. Everyone. Good morning. morning. Hi. Pancakes, huh? Angela and Steve first met when they were teens and reconnected years later at the hospital where Angela works. In 2010, I saw Angela at the hospital and we started talking. It was like everything from when we were younger came back. Her smile lights up the room. She's very kind. She's funny. She was just overall the one. Angela's two children from her first marriage, Ava and Tyler, immediately took a liking to Steve. Look, I finished all my homework. Good job. I am so proud of you. That's my girl. The one part I really love about him 
is because he's strong, he's funny, and he's kind. And he really, really is cuddly. He would play some basketball with me. Every now and then he would take me to baseball games. One morning, while Steve is at work, Angela has the nightmare once again. Exhausted, Angela tries to ignore it and go back to sleep. Every morning, Ava will open the door and run up and greet me at my bedside. And this particular morning, I could see her head at the foot of the bed. Good morning, princess. Ava? I sat up in bed and I'm like, oh my god. What did I just see? This, this is crazy. I could feel somebody watching me. Ava? Tyler? I look out of the shower. There's no one there. So I continue to take my shower. I could feel something else, like someone was there that wasn't supposed to be there. Angela Jasmine has suffered through the same disturbing nightmare in which she's being chased. But one morning, while she's awake, Angela feels something she can't explain. It felt like a human hand in the back of my head. But when I turned around, there's no one there. I felt petrified. I felt violated. But I never told anybody because I just wanted to forget about it. Soon, Angela begins to feel a cold, presence all the time. 
I'd wrap myself up in blankets like a cocoon. And no matter what, even though I had tons of blankets on me, I could still feel like cold air going over my skin underneath all those blankets. Her skin was so hot, but at the same time, she was saying how cold she was. So to me, it didn't make sense. Angela manages to get back on her feet, but is soon struck with new and bizarre symptoms. I'm a CAT scan tech at a local hospital. When I would go to work, I would get anxious. I start sweating, I get dizzy, ring in the ears, stomach pain. Angela? Angela, are you okay? Finally realizing this is more than just a common cold, Angela turns to a doctor for help. I'm not insane. This is real. This is really happening to me. She's diagnosed with agoraphobia, a fear of places and situations that might cause panic, helplessness, or embarrassment. Hey, babe. Hey. Why don't you come outside? Air might do you some good. I'm tired. Are you sure? Eventually, Angela's anxiety got so bad that she was given depression medication to help her to get through this. Will you come out and play with us? Please, please. My kids would always be like, Mommy, I want to go here. Mommy, I want to go there. Mommy, you never want to do anything. And I didn't. I didn't want to go anywhere. I just wanted to stay in that house and be alone all the time. Oh. <sighs> Not today. It's OK. I was worried about her because she was acting strange. She would act angry at me or my sister for nothing. And she would just be in a bad mood or cranky. <sighs> Let's let your mom rest, OK, guys? Come on, outside you two. A lot of times she would try to mask it somehow, but I could still see pretty much through that. And I knew that there was a bigger issue. With each passing day, Angela sinks deeper into a dark abyss. I do everything in the dark. You would never, ever see me with a smile, ever. Something was controlling my thoughts and putting thoughts in my head.
Angela Jasmine's mind has been taken over by the figure from her nightmare. It made me scared. It made me not understand why is this happening to me. I was just scared. Ange. Honey. Here I am. It was like a memory lapse. She would forget why she was even in that room. What are you doing in the dark? Did you get the kids? Not the kids. I want to be in the dark. It became very hard because a lot of the times that I would bring something up to help Angela, she would completely like shut down and she would get very angry. Leave me alone. I think I was becoming a person I hated. I didn't like who I was. Over the next few weeks, tension between the newlyweds is at an all-time high. Have you seen my keys? I swear I left them right here on the counter. Ange. Hello? Did you take my keys? I didn't take anything of yours. He would always accuse me of taking his stuff. Why do I to take his stuff. I don't want his stuff. I swear, I don't even know why we're paying these doctors. You seem worse now. I'm not even taking these stupid meds. They're not helping. And neither are you. Steve believes Angela is still suffering from anxiety. Until one night, he has an experience that changes his mind. I heard the furniture move. I mean, it was hard to explain, and I really didn't know what to think. It sounded like someone was taking both of their fists and just banging on the side of the house. There was no footprints, nothing trampled. For the first time, Steve suspects something paranormal. It really woke me up and clicked that there was something there. What are you doing in here? I've been up all night waiting for you. I tried calling you four times. Look, it was a busy shift. Something's not right here. I was down here watching TV. And I heard furniture moving behind me. 
then there was this loud banging outside the wall. What are you talking about? It's like a heavy fist pounding. I went out to check. There was nobody. No footprints or anything. It was probably the neighborhood kids. No, you're not listening to me. I don't even I think maybe this, this house is haunted. Something's wrong, and we need to figure out how to get rid of it. And I think whatever's here, it's doing something to you. It's changing you. That's ridiculous. She got very upset with me, saying that there was nothing wrong with her house. And I was imagining it. And it was like she was in denial. I'm going to bed. Ange. It would aggravate me and get me upset with him because I didn't want to face that there was anything wrong. I wanted just to go on with my life like there was nothing there. That night, the witch from Angela's childhood nightmare returns. And it's closer than ever before. Angela Jasmine is face to face with what's been haunting her dreams since she was a child. terrified you literally feel like it is trying to steal your soul rip your soul out of your body <laughs> the crying and the look of fear on her face she was really scared what thing what are you talking about for years angela has kept the nightmare a secret until now the woman from my nightmares she's real I finally saw her face. She has these red eyes. What nightmares? All this stuff that I always pretended like it was not real, it is so real. And it's after me trying to take my soul. Angela slowly opened up to me about things that had happened to her over the years. She really started to tell me everything. I don't know how Angela dealt with it all this time, bottling it up. It's OK. You're safe now. I believe you. The next morning, the family turns to their faith for guidance. Why are we doing this? What's going on? Tyler, there's, there's something not nice in this house. And praying's gonna keep us safe, okay? Mommy, I'm scared. There's nothing to be afraid of, sweetie. We're gonna make everything better, okay? Take Mommy's hand. Our father, 
Lord in heaven. heaven. I have a religious background. I went to a Catholic school, and I knew a lot of prayers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We would like bless each corner of the house. We would like pray the Hail Marys and act of contrition. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The house really started to feel warm and loving again. And it seemed like that heavy weight that was there wasn't there whenever we prayed. Amen. But could it be that easy? Could the entity really be gone? Over the course of the next few days, Tyler's personality appears to change. All right, guys. Got some eggs coming up. He used to be happy. Now all of a sudden he was mean and miserable. It was totally not Tyler. I hate her. I hate all of you. I just felt angry and I really don't know why. I would think and like try to reason with myself why did I feel like doing that? And I just couldn't understand why. I'll see what's going on. and Tyler's dark thoughts continue. Something inside of me was controlling my thoughts, telling me to drug, and I just felt like I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to do. I was just scared at that moment because I couldn't control myself. After praying throughout their home, the Jasmines believe they are safe from a mysterious entity lurking in the shadows. But lately, 11-year-old Tyler has been acting unlike himself. Tyler, sweetie, it's time for school. What is this? Is this you? The picture was Tyler with his cartoon type, circly, crazy eyes, and he had a knife. And I'm like, what is this? Because he never draws anything like that. 
And I was like freaked out. Baby, why did you draw this? I didn't do it. I swear. Something told me to. When this thing started controlling me, I felt helpless because I couldn't control how I acted, what I said, what I was doing or anything. Angela fears the worst. The entity from her nightmare has returned and is now after her son. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Whatever was in the house was definitely controlling his thoughts. I felt horrible. I didn't know what to do. Desperate for help, Angela's husband Steve reaches out to a coworker who does paranormal investigations on the side. My name is Eric Morin. I'm a spiritual warfare counselor for East Coast Angel Paranormal Rescue. I've reviewed my evidence, and what I believe you're experiencing is the old hag syndrome. The old hag syndrome is very common that you feel like a paralyzing feeling. It's something that builds fear and threat into that person. The paralyzing fear, the red eyes, it's a classic sign of the demonic. Demonic. Evil spirits will appear in certain forms. Sometimes they show up as an innocent little girl to build empathy. Sometimes they'll show up as an old hag to build fear. So what does that mean? What should we do? I believe we can help. Mike is Eric's colleague and a trained demonologist. But first, I would like to try something. Mike wants to conduct an experiment to detect the presence of a demon. I would like to have each of you take communion. Okay? Even the kids? Yes. Okay. The communion wafer is a deeply religious item. The body of Christ. A human spirit. The body of Christ. Is not affected by religious items. Body of Christ. But the demonic, it's like putting pepper spray in their face. Body of Christ. <coughs> It felt like fire going down my throat. It was the worst thing I'd ever, ever tasted, and I wanted to spit it out. <coughs> Mommy, are you OK? Tyler, take your sister and go outside and play for a bit. But I don't want to. Tyler, now. By Angela's reaction, we immediately realized that there was a demonic that was attached to her. The demon is here. We need to perform a deliverance immediately. Angela and Steve send the kids to a relative's house while Mike sets up for the deliverance. Mike explained to me that if I didn't do something now, that it would take everything out of me. And once it's used all of me up, it would leave me for dead. Angela, I need you to sit here. Don't be afraid. Steve, I need you to stand over here. Look. You are Angela's rock, OK? You are here to fight for her. Angela, remember, you have to mean this with all of your heart, or it won't work, OK? Is everyone ready? Let us begin. Most glorious prince, St. Michael, the archangel, defend us. Defend us in battle. Defend us in battle. Be our protection. 
be our protection against the wickedness against the wickedness and snares and snares of the devil of the devil defend us against the rulers of the world of darkness Mike takes out one of the most powerful known weapons to fight a demon, a first-class holy relic, the actual blood of St. Agnes. A first-class relic holds power over the demonic because it still has part of that saint's holiness attached to it. It's part of a saint. We drive you out, whoever you may be in the name and of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be snatched away and driven from the church of God. For more haunting, visit TLC.com. demonologist is using the power of a holy relic, a saint's blood, to evict a demon from Angela Jasmine's body. Angela was actually fighting for her soul. I put the relic on the back of her neck, and she jumped and was startled. We drive you out, whoever you may be. Every tendon in her neck seemed to bulge out of her neck. In the name and of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be snatched away and driven from the church of God. <laughs> Angela, I need you to say these prayers with me. You need to reclaim your life. Our Father. Our Father. <laughs> Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. I couldn't pray. It was so hard to get those words out. Who trespass. Who trespass? Who trespass? Against us. Okay. Against us. Against us. It was weird. Like, it was like trying to hold my words so I couldn't say them. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of me. Get out of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of me now. Get out of me now. When it left my body, the room was brighter. I felt happy. Amen. When the deliverance was over, her face looked different. The energy was different. I, she smiled for the first time. <gasps> After she finished the prayer, I looked up at her and I saw my wife again. She was the woman that I fell in love with. <laughs> you okay? It is. You're safe now. <laughs> For the first time, I had hope. I never had hope before. But before Eric and Mike leave, Angela has questions. Although she's been suffering from the same nightmare of the old hag since she was 13, she has no idea why it attached to her. I felt like, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. I never did anything wrong. Why me? The red eyes that you saw, it's a sign of the occult. Have you ever fooled around with witchcraft or spirit boards? Oh, my god. 
my grandmother's house. When I was 13, we'd go to my grandmother's house every weekend, and uh, we'd play that spirit board. I was 13. Why now? These entities tend to strike when we are happiest. It's trying to break you down. She married Steve. Steve was a threat. Steve had faith. So once Steve was in the picture, it amped up its game. It started to attack more. And when it found out it couldn't destroy you, it went after your family, eventually even Tyler. This entity started messing with the kids because it'll hurt Angela. It'll break Angela down even more. So it'll be easier for her to just give up and let this entity take her soul, which was their goal. I want to be in the dark. I owe everything to Mike and Eric. I think they saved her life. So what do we do now? Are we still in danger? We believe that after today, you are safe, but we're going to leave you some tools to keep your family safe in the future. Over the next few weeks, Angela and Steve heed Eric and Mike's advice to focus on their faith. Tyler and Ava, I took them out of the public school, and I put them in a private Catholic school. But the events take a toll on the once happy couple. Steve and Angela separate and eventually divorce. I almost forgot. Their school pictures came in today. Thought you might want to take a few to your house. Even though Steve and I aren't together anymore, we still talk, we're still friends. But sometimes things get so bad, you just can't keep going on. You got to start over fresh. Things are going good. I like my new school. I do think going through this has made me and my family closer. It does make us appreciate each other more. I feel definitely stronger as a person. And even though the marriage didn't last, as long as the demon is gone and Angela can live her life being a more positive person and being that positive role model for Tyler and Ava, that will keep me happy forever. Embracing new beginnings. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> so cute. We're family now. We take good care of you and our baby. Becomes the unsuspecting target of a vengeful team. <laughs> Something evil was in my house. Go forth and unleash your mighty power. Who threatens to tear the family <laughs> apart. <What is> <laughs> it's all gonna burn. Burn. It's like you felt the devil was coming for you. I'm gonna kill you all. You have to fight back. Your baby needs you. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Nestled in the mountains far beyond the music and bright lights of Nashville lies a quiet town in East Tennessee. Johnson City is a good community. Where I live, everyone knows each other. We've grew up that way. It's the kind of place where families stick together no matter what. In 2015, Jamie Markland and her son Sidney move his girlfriend Taylor into their home. Okay, watch your step. Taylor, it's a little small. 
That's but okay. I think you'll be happy here. The relationship turned serious when Taylor became pregnant. Um, Miss Merkland. I know I said this earlier, but I just I wanted to thank you again for letting me live here. You're welcome, honey. And please, it's it's Jamie, okay? Okay. Yeah. We're family now. We can take good care of you and our baby. I promise. I found out Taylor's pregnant was a, a big life changer. Didn't expect it. Got you something. <laughs> I was worried what mom would say. She'd be disappointed, but took it a lot better than I considered she would. <laughs> You are so sweet. Thank you. Jamie tries to be as supportive as possible, knowing what it's like to raise a child on her own. This is adorable. My mom was a single mother raising me. It was a little hard, but somehow she still managed to do it. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. So cute. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I wanted Sidney to be in his child's life because his dad wasn't really there for him. It was hard being a single parent. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. Up here. I told him I would support him whether I felt like I should or not. When you're that young and you're going to bring a child into the world, you need all the help you can get. I was just hopeful that they would, no matter what, stay together and make it work. A few weeks after moving in, Taylor runs into someone from her past. What's up, Taylor? It's been a while. Hey, Raven. How are you? So I heard you and Sydney are still together. Bad move. What do you want, Raven? What? Can't a girl worry about her friend? We used to be friends, remember? Way before you and Sydney ever met. Raven was jealous of Taylor's relationship with me. Raven done everything in her power to keep us apart. Taylor just finally said, no, I don't want to be near you. Taylor and Raven just quit hanging out. And Quit talking. You've made it perfectly clear what you think about Sydney. But I love him. Okay? And now let's just say he's not going anywhere. Oh my god. Seriously, you're knocked up? Are you seriously gonna have a baby with this guy? He's a loser who can't even take care of himself. Raven was very upset when Taylor got pregnant. Raven said it was a big mistake with me. Why are you doing this, Taylor? Why are you hurting me? We used to be best friends, and now we're nothing because of him. I can only say this one more time, Raven. I love Sydney, and we're going to be together forever. I'm sorry, but if you can't accept that, then I can't have you in my life. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Taylor. You won't be together forever. I'll make sure of it. Have a nice life. Friend. Raven's vengeful threats, fueled by jealousy and obsession, have shaken Taylor to the core. I never really understood why Raven didn't like me, and like me and Taylor being together. She can only pray that Raven keeps her distance, but you can never really know a person's darkest secrets. so I see van você and mentenomo van tayo vain vain to vai a maso vada maso one night Sidney finds himself working late on his truck he's been studying to be an auto mechanic Sydney was good at it. It sparked his interest. He wanted to learn more every day. He was down there working on his truck, <laughs> just doing something to it.
just out of nowhere. My nose started pouring blood. I thought it was a little odd because I never had nosebleeds. I heard the voice. It was dark and the only light was on the front porch. So I just happened to look. Hello? I saw a shadowy figure. It was real dark and tall and had a hood on. Can I help you? It was a little strange because where we lived was up in a mountain and very secluded. If you're lost, there's a gas station about a mile down the other way. Couldn't see its eyes or anything, but more bodily figure. And it stuck its hand out to me and motioned for me to come here. Sydney is working late into the night when he is startled by an ominous presence. When he gestured to me, it freaked me out real bad, and I was terrified. I knew I needed to get inside and get away. I looked and I couldn't see nothing. Still working on that drug? Are you okay? You don't look so good. What happened to your nose? It's nothing, Mom. Just a nosebleed. You're white as a ghost. He just looked pale, like all the blood had rushed out of his skin. I mean, he was scared. What's going on? Why are you looking out there? Uh, I saw someone when I was in the garage. We had had some break-ins up at our house, which is odd because we live way in the woods. It's OK. Whoever it was, he's gone now. Stop worrying. Everything's fine. Go to bed. I'll be sure to lock up. I tried to tell myself it was my imagination. I tried to brush it off best I could. There was no way to explain what was going on. I kind of thought that was crazy at first. And I wanted to, I guess, just keep it to myself for the time being. girl calls the house number and she was looking for Taylor. Taylor isn't here right now. Can I help you? She lives there, right? Who is this? How did you get my number? My home phone has been private for 50 years. Not in a phone book, never has been. OK, well, I don't have time for this, so goodbye. <laughs> Sydney had better watch out. They're coming for him. They're going to take him away. I didn't know what she meant by taking Sydney, but the tone of her voice, it was evil. Its intent was bad. Who's coming for him? Who is this? Who's going to take him away? I'm warning Sydney. And you. Is that some kind of a threat? Don't you ever call this house again, or I'll have you arrested. Do you hear me? <laughs> I told her if she didn't leave us alone, I would call the law, and she just kind of laughed at that. Who are you? What do you want? Hello? Hello? I told her, stay away from me, stay away from my family, and stay away from my son. And she said, well, if that's how you want to play, then you be warned. <laughs> I was trying to calm down and just absorb everything that just went on. 
but I was afraid to be in the house. I didn't know what was gonna happen. First chance she gets, Jamie tells Sydney and his girlfriend about the threatening phone call. One person immediately comes to Taylor's mind. You don't think it was Raven, do you? I swear, I never gave her this number. And she doesn't even know I'm living here. So I heard you and Sydney are still together. Bad move. You won't be together forever. I'll make sure of it. Raven? Your ex-friend who hates my guts. I wouldn't put it past her. Well, whoever this Raven is, friend or not, she sounds like trouble. All I know is you better not bring that girl around here. I kind of questioned Taylor. It kind of made me upset with her because this was one of her friends. I don't think that Taylor plans on ever seeing her again, especially now with the baby on the way. I thought Raven was just a joke. I didn't take the threat seriously. That was something I just laughed about and put by me. It'll be OK, Mom. Raven's completely harmless. Right, Taylor? Something was not right with it. I felt nervous, felt scared. I felt like I knew something was going to happen. I summon you, demon, by the power of your name, Dantalian. I invite you, great demon, so that you may come into this world. I was in bed, and it was dark, and I felt a very strong presence. you demon by the power of your name it was evil but i just felt like like the insides of my body were shaking don talion i invite you great demon so that you may come into this world go forth and unleash your mighty power <gasps> mysterious evil entity has paid a visit to Sydney, and now his mother, Jamie. Mom, it's me, Sydney. Wake up. I woke up to my mom screaming and ran over there. First, I thought somebody broke in the house, and then I realized she was still asleep. And I woke up where well, the kids were shaking me. Something was in my room. Something was trying to kill me. Hey, you're OK. There's no one here but us. It was just a nightmare. No, it was real. It felt so real. That put its hand around my arm, and I was screaming. It was coming for me. I've never felt scared in my home like that. What was it? What did you see? All I can say is that it was so evil. It's almost like you felt the devil was coming for you. It must have been just a nightmare. I need to go back to bed. I'll be OK. Let me know if you need anything, okay? Okay.
But Jamie can't shake the feeling that this is some kind of omen. But I lay there the whole night. I never went back to sleep because I was afraid I would dream about it again. I thought maybe it meant death. Despite the strange events that Sidney and his mother have been experiencing, Sidney remains focused on his classes at school. I took auto mechanics all four years of high school. When I got out of high school, I wanted to be a decent mechanic and working 24 7. Hey, got this girl Pern yet? <laughs> yeah, but still got some gremlins to work out, though. Well, lucky you. I'm here to help. What do you need me to do? Uh, just start messing with the alternator, I guess. Is that what the problem is? Didn't we fix this before? You sure? Oh, yeah. I just had a real bad feeling it wasn't good at all. It was like a shadow standing over my shadow. It just towered over me. The shadow bears an eerie resemblance to the cloaked figure Sidney saw at his home that one night. Hey, man, I got it. You okay? Your nose is bleeding. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. I was just focused on getting away. It freaked me out real bad. Sydney is in shock. The shadow figure now appears to be following him. But where does it come from? What does it want? Sydney's girlfriend, Taylor, has helplessly watched him and his mother grapple with something evil. I'm really starting to get worried about these nosebleeds. I mean, the blood won't stop gushing out. Uh, I know. I, I don't know why it keeps happening. I was starting to get concerned about the nosebleeds. I didn't know maybe I had a, something medical wrong with me. I need to see a doctor. Do you think it's that serious? I don't know, but... I think I'm imagining things, too. I keep seeing this dark shadow, like I'm being followed. I was telling Taylor about what had been going on and what happened to school. Suddenly, for Taylor, it all makes sense. Oh, my god. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Taylor. You won't be together forever. I'll make sure of it. Hello? I'm warning Sydney. And you. Who is this? <laughs> Taylor recalls a dark secret her former friend Raven once told her. It's her. It has to be her. Sydney, there's something I never told you. <sighs> Raven's a witch. <laughs> what are you talking about? When Taylor realized Raven was a witch, she went into panic mode. At first, I thought she was just joking. I'm serious. Trust me, I didn't believe her when she first told me either, but... <sighs> I mean, think about it. Your nose bleeds, that phone call, and your mom's nightmare. I, I don't know, I think maybe she placed a curse on you and maybe your mom, too. A curse? Taylor definitely thought Raven did have something to do with what was going on because Raven was associated with witchcraft. A curse, a spell, I don't know what, but something. I think she's trying to get back at me by hurting you. Listen, let's just try to forget this Raven chick, OK? What is it? What's wrong?
Listen, let's just try to forget this Raven chick, okay? Taylor believes her ex-friend Raven, a jealous, self-proclaimed witch, has cast a spell on her boyfriend in order to split the couple apart. I summon you, demon, by the power of your name. What's wrong? I felt something grab me. It was stronger than any normal human could be, and it was very cold. I heard screaming. I was scared to death. What's the matter? What's wrong? Mom, you're right. There's something here. It, it just grabbed me and threw me across the room. What's it? You mean like the thing that grabbed me? I told you it was Raven. Oh, my God. That girl who called, she's a witch. I think she's placed a curse on Sydney and on all of us. That was the clarifying moment for me that I knew something, something paranormal was in my house, something evil was in my house. Raven, she was a witch, and she knew what was going on at my house. I really think she, she put this on my house. I didn't go to sleep, and I just kept trying to think about what I'm gonna do. I was extremely afraid of what she was capable of after this. I got my Bible, I put it under my pillow. I didn't know what would happen. All I could do is sit there and worry. I thought back to where I laughed at Raven for the threat and thought I was a little aggravated myself for not taking actions then. And Taylor blamed a lot of it on herself just because her and Raven were so close. Not knowing where to turn, Jamie calls her sister Christina. I reached out to my sister because she's very spiritual. She's just a very open person. She wouldn't judge it if I've been crazy, you know? And I knew she would understand. I knew she could tell me what to do. My sister told me about what was going on with the witchcraft. My concern was safety. I told her that we needed to find us a good prayer, get us some sage, and get us some salt, and try to do a house blessing. But it doesn't take long for Christina to sense an evil presence. I got outside of the car and I felt like I was being bullied and like it was telling me, do not come on this property. Do not come on this property. Not wanting to take any risks, Christina leaves. I was afraid I'd bring something home to my house. She felt like she couldn't even step on our property. She was scared. She felt something evil coming. Following her sister's instructions, Jamie attempts to bless the house on her own. She told us some things to do to protect ourselves. She gave me some sage. She's like, you've got to say these prayers. OK, let's pray. The prayers were just for protection, praying to God to keep us safe. We claim, claim this, this home for me and my family as a place of spiritual safety and protection from all attacks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I command every evil spirit to leave and never return. We renounce and break all curses, spells, and assignments against me or this place. We thank you, Lord, for doing this. We claim this home for me and my family as a place of spiritual safety and protection from all attacks of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, 
I command every evil spirit to leave and never return. We renounce and break all curses, spells, and assignments against me or this place. We thank you, Lord, for doing this. During the prayer, I heard a voice saying, Dante. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Do you hear that? Hear what? It's like someone's whispering in my ear. It's saying, Dante? Nobody else heard the voice. Yeah, it made me wonder why I was the only one hearing it. What do you think it means? You okay? Attempting to fight what she believes to be an evil curse placed on her family, Jamie Markland comes under attack. From all attacks of the enemy. You okay? That felt like I was having a heart attack. The pain in my chest felt like something was stabbing me, just over and over, and it, it wouldn't let up. I really thought I was going to die. Jamie is rushed to the hospital where doctors discover a mysterious blood clot they can't explain. In the meantime, her sister reaches out to experts for help. I knew that this entity had a turn in why she was in the hospital. I was like, we've got to do something. That night, Rob and Tanya of Paranormal Technology Investigations meet with Jamie's son, Sidney, and his pregnant girlfriend, Taylor. This investigation needed to be pushed up top priority before somebody was seriously injured or killed. Your mother told me someone's trying to hurt you. You were attacked by some sort of entity. I, I know it. It sounds crazy, but is it possible that somebody it's a curse or a spell on me. It's more than possible. It was Raven, it has to be. Who's Raven? She's a witch. We used to be friends, but she turned on me because she despises Sydney. And now she sent this thing to harm all of us. We need to get started. She was really scared. She said this witch had cast a spell, sent it to Jamie and that household. Tanya begins the investigation in the living room. When I started approaching the door, I actually had chills. I was a little fearful of what I might come in contact with. Hello? At first I was startled and then I was shocked. I'd never seen that for myself. It's rare that something like that happens. I mean, even the best investigator would be startled by that. Kathy, Kathy, what was that? That door just opened. What the hell? This door opened by itself. Shut by itself. I opened the door, looked outside, there was nothing there. And then, I mean, it just, it just opened it and shut by itself. Rob attempts to record electronic voice phenomena, or spirit voices. Are we alone?
Is anyone here? Pop, you hear that? I didn't hear anything. What is it? Sydney started hearing uh, voices. Graveyard. A mysterious voice informs Sydney to go to the graveyard. Although Rob suspects this could be some kind of a trap, he and Tanya agree to check out the cemetery over the hill. That was my fear, but we've got to investigate this. We've got to see what's going on. As daylight breaks, the investigators search for clues. Tanya, get a shot of this. Yeah. We did see burnt grass and candle wax in front of one of the headstones. Somebody had been up there performing some type of a ritual. Some sort of chicken bones? Yeah. Rob and Tanya fear whoever performed the ritual could have conjured a demon. I mean, you, you can just sense the evil. I summon you, demon, by the power of your name. Go forth and unleash your mighty power. We believed it was a uh, demon by the name of Don Talion. We do know that the demon is associated with witchcraft and we know that it is a high-level demon and that its main purpose is to destroy and kill. If you don't protect yourself, they can do a lot of harm to not just one person, but many people. They're vicious. Fearing that Sydney could fall prey to demonic possession, Rob promises to return with a preacher who can exorcise the demon from the house for good. Days later, Jamie returns from the hospital, fearful of what's been happening in her own home. They told me some things that had happened during the investigation. It was a type of demon. Sydney? Taylor? Is anyone home? My reaction was fear, like a deathly fear. Like, why is this happening to my family? Steve, come on, stop it, please. I don't know what to do, you gotta help. Oh, come on, man. It's all gonna burn, burn. Come on, stop. <laughs> Everything and everyone. <laughs> Everything and everyone. What happened to Sydney? I don't know. He keeps mumbling. I don't know what to do. It's all gonna burn. Everything and everyone. Burn. He was rocking back and forth, and he said, everybody's gonna burn in here tonight. And it's just crazy. You just didn't know what to expect. It's all gonna burn everything and everyone. Rob! Oh, thank God you're home in Sydney! He's not right! Jamie contacted me and said that Sydney's behavior wasn't normal. She said he wasn't acting like himself. She seemed like he was very disoriented. I believe Sydney was possessed. We needed to get a exorcism done immediately. You're all gonna die! Oh, you're acting crazy, Sydney! And you're scaring me! This baby isn't mine! It isn't mine! And Sydney said, that's not my baby anyway. He said, I don't care. He said, I'll kill you. You're all gonna die. You're gonna die. I'm gonna kill you all! For more of haunting, visit TLC.com.
hearing me. This baby isn't mine. It isn't mine. Sydney is under demonic possession. Oh, my God. I could feel the hate. I'm gonna kill you all. You're all gonna burn. I had no doubt whatsoever that this was not Sydney. There's a different look to him. Burn, you're gonna die. It's the scariest thing in the world to ever see your child like that. It was different. His voice sounded different. I'm gonna die. Please, this has to, in the name of Jesus Christ, go back to where you came from and leave my family alone. I started to pray and to tell it in Jesus' name that he was not allowed here. You're not welcome here. You have to fight back. Do not let this demon take control of you. Your baby needs you. <laughs> What's happening? out and do all kinds of crazy stuff and not even know what I was doing. Finally, the paranormal investigators helping the family return with a preacher. This is Jerry. He's a Pentecostal preacher. Don't be afraid. He's here to help us. The power of the Holy Spirit flows through him. Holy Spirit acts through him, speaking God's word. He had experience dealing with these types of situations. He's laid hands on people. He's exercised demons before. He started speaking in tongues, in a language unknown to yourself. It's as though God is speaking through you. The preacher then focuses his attention on Sydney. He immediately knew what he was dealing with, this demon. He felt that it was working through Sydney. When I saw an upside down cross on Sydney's back, I felt like the demon was just going to rip him open from the inside. It looked like somebody had carved it into my back. <laughs> but the preacher refuses to stand down. And now we all pray. Our Father. It felt very powerful. It felt like everybody was vibrating, like you could feel his energy. My kingdom come. The demon was being pushed back to where it was summoned from. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's now been several months since the exorcism took place. The family has not seen or heard from Raven and remains at peace. After the cleansing and the blessing of my house, you could feel the difference. And the difference in Sydney was amazing. He's back to Sydney. Me and Taylor found a place for Ronan moved. I completed high school and graduated. And I got a job working full time, being a mechanic, to make sure I can support my family. What happened, it's still got an effect on her. But Taylor kind of keeps her distance. She's uh, still bothered about everything, kind of just scared to talk about it. In November 2015, Sydney and Taylor's healthy baby girl is born. She is perfect. <laughs> Sydney, he loves that little girl. And. 
There's nothing he wouldn't do for his family. I'd feel proud that Sidney is doing all this for himself. Seeing and dealing with stuff like that makes everything else seem like it's really nothing. We went through it and we survived it, but we needed each other. That's a good feeling to know that they're there no matter what. When three teams make contact with the other side, it's all fun and games. If you are here, make your presence known. Something else was in the room with us at that moment. Are you here? Give us a sign. It was thrilling. We've contacted somebody. Until someone gets hurt. It was becoming more invasive. It was hurting people. It was something unholy, something dark and hateful. Can they close the door before it's too late? In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see the things we fear. There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Carl Johnson is convinced his house is haunted. As long as I can remember, there was strange activity in that house. We would hear footsteps, the sound of somebody walking around, very distinct. hearing noises outside my room, like someone was walking. Honey, you know there's nothing to worry about. It's harmless. Come on, let's get back to bed. It's 1971. 16-year-old Carl lives in the house with his twin brother Keith, his 14-year-old sister Cynthia, and their parents. My household in 1971 was very interesting. It was a beautiful house. We had a wonderful family. Hey, kiddos. My mom and dad, it was kind of like leave it to beaver, if you will. They were wonderful parents. You're home early. Yeah, but I have to go back in on Saturday. My dad was very religious in the choir at his church, and they went square dancing. And it was just the typical mom and dad of the day. Does that mean Keith and I can go to the movies then? You need to ask your father. But you were late for the bus this morning. Late? Yeah, I couldn't sleep last night. I missed my alarm. Carl had a visit from the family ghost last night. He was quite startled. No, I wasn't. I was just, I don't know. It was just weird. Oh, nonsense. 
There's nothing in this house except for three ornery children. Come on, kids. Let's wash up for dinner. Got something good. My parents, they made the best of it. Joking about the ghost. It's a friendly ghost. It's not going to hurt us. Did you get everything? Yeah. Got it. All right, good. All right. Don't want to be late. OK, kids. We're headed out for our dance lesson. Mm -hmm. We'll be back by 10, and I expect you all in bed when I get home. No horseplay. Have fun. OK. But Carl has something more serious in mind. While his parents are gone, he is determined to get to the bottom of what's been going on in the house. What are you looking for? This. Let's set it up over here. The spirit board was kind of the rage. A lot of people had a spirit board, a talking board in their house. My mother had had one when she was a little girl. Uh, Keith, can you get some candles? It became a project of interest. We're going to find out what these spirits want, what they are, who they are, why are they here. Are you guys ready? We are calling upon the spirits of this house. If you are here, make your presence known. Nothing's happening. Just wait. If you are here, make your presence known. All of a sudden, it feels like your hands are being guided and not pushed around so much, but just a very subtle guidance. Carl, stop moving it. I swear I didn't do it. It was thrilling. That's basically how it all started. We weren't afraid of it. We liked it. And it was just something that piqued our interest at an early age. Who are you? S. Y. L. It spelled out the name Sylvia. She was like a spirit of the board, if you will. How did you die? The more it communicated, the more I began thinking this is a real person, a personality that is communicating. Hey, I don't think we should be doing this. It's fine. Don't be such a scaredy cat. We want to meet you. Do you live here? C-E-L-L-A-R. The planchette spelled out cellar. What do you guys say? Should we do it? No way! It's a cellar? <sighs> You're such a chicken. Come on, Cindy. We went to the top of the basement stairs. Sylvia, are you here? If you're here, give us a sign. And a 
of a sudden we heard three knocks. She's really here. Come on. She's here. I know it. Now we knew it wasn't just something in our minds. We weren't imagining this. Something was in the house that could communicate with us, that was willing to be known. This was fascinating. It was addictive. I looked around, and nothing could have caused that rapping sound. I had an eerie sensation I had never experienced before. I felt that strong sensation of being watched as if there were eyes on me. For as long as the Johnson kids can remember, their Rhode Island home has been haunted. Now they believe they've made contact with a spirit from the other side. It was amazing. It was spooky, but it's kind of fun to be a little scared. Over the next few weeks, the teens hold regular spirit board sessions in attempts to communicate with Sylvia. We decided that since we had had this breakthrough that we were going to use the board more frequently. I want her to show us that she's real. Tell her. Tell her to give us a sign. Like what? I don't know. If you're real, make the phone ring. It's not working. The planchette went to S, but then instead of spelling out Sylvia, it went to S-U-S. Susie? Oh my gosh, it's Susie. S-U-S. -S. It was my girlfriend, Susie. I felt astonished just as much as he did. I really felt that something else was in the room with us at that moment. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you right back, okay? Okay, bye. It really happened. It was her. It was Sylvia. I, can you believe it? We talked to a ghost. No, I'm not doing this anymore. It's creepy and it's not safe. At 16 years old, that was making me very, very nervous. I must say, I really wasn't frightened. It was more of a, like, wow, this is great. We've contacted somebody. Come on. But could Keith's instincts be right? 
could they be playing with fire? There was what sounded to be a woman's voice outside the window, <laughs> laughing, cackling. <laughs> it came closer and closer, right up to the window. Came to one window, began laughing. <laughs> came to the other window, stopping to laugh at each one. Sixteen-year-old Keith Johnson has just made an encounter with a haunting presence. I really felt that was directed at me and that it was truly trying to terrorize me. There was no way I was asleep. I was wide awake. My heart was pounding. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you yelling? And why is your radio on? I heard someone laughing outside my window. It was all around me. It was like someone was watching me. What's wrong? Is he OK? Then my radio just turns on by itself. Someone was in my room. I was concerned for Keith because He's not a reactionary. Something was really bothering him. What do you mean someone was in your room? It was, uh, I don't know, a ghost? All right, that's enough of this ghost talk. There's nothing in your room, and there's nothing in this house. Let's get back to bed. I felt frustrated that they didn't believe me. I wasn't sleepwalking. I wasn't imagining. I was truly terrified because of what I'd experienced while I was wide awake. There's no doubt. And I know to this day I was wide awake. You OK? In a way, I felt that my family was there for me. Now thoroughly terrified. The teens try a new approach. My brother and my sister and I, we turn to prayer. We turn to prayer as a defense against whatever was there. I had a cross that was my grandmother's, and I started to wear it, and I started to keep it with me, because it made me feel safe. Maybe we should pray.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That seemed to lighten the house. Even the lighting in the room seemed to be brighter after we prayed. It made things better. Amen. But for how long? Soon after his 17th birthday, Carl decides to create a space of his own in the cellar, far from his parents and siblings. It looked like a Victorian-style ladies' glove. Hello? Someone there? This had to be Sylvia. I wanted to find out what is going on in our house. What is it she wants? Later, Carl attempts to make contact with the owner of the glove. I started to research the paranormal in earnest. I wanted to read everything I could find out about it. Through my research, I had discovered a formula for raising a spirit, trying to get a manifestation, isolate the spirit so that we could see what it was, try to communicate with it, try to know what it needed from us. I'm calling upon the spirit of this house, Sylvia, to make her presence known. This was its chance. If it wanted to get a message through, it could do it then. I'm calling upon you to know why you are here. Show yourself. Carl Johnson has just made contact with the ghost haunting his house. I saw the figure of a woman. Her hair was pulled up and into a bun on the top of her head. She was walking towards me, silently. My blood ran cold. I was just transfixed there. Suddenly, Carl makes a realization. The pieces fell together. It was a woman. I found that glove upstairs that disappeared mysteriously. The name Sylvia had come through the spirit board. This had to be the same entity, the same spirit. But what does Sylvia want? Seeking answers, Carl returns to the spirit board. His twin brother, Keith, refuses to participate. I was not going to join them. My brother and sister, however, would determine that they were going to receive a sign of Sylvia's presence. To me, that was going a little too far. Something's wrong. I can feel it. She needs our help. Help? Yeah. 
We need to communicate with her. We are calling upon Sylvia. Why do you need our help? She's not answering. Let's just go play outside. D. E. A. T. H. Death. Oh my god. By spelling out death, I think it was just trying to frighten us. And it worked. The spirit that was talking to us was not Sylvia. It was something darker, something menacing, something we wanted no part of. The teens vow to never use the spirit board again. It was just becoming hostile and threatening, so it was time to put it away, leave it alone. And they can only pray it leaves them alone. One night, I was awoken by the sound of something being dragged across the floor, but I didn't see anything. It was definite enough to disturb me. I knew I wasn't going to go back to sleep there, so I went upstairs to finish my sleep on the couch in the living room. So I was laying on the couch, trying to get back to sleep. And then the thumping started. Banging on the roof. It became louder and louder until it was shaking the whole house. Mom, Dad! What's going on? I don't know. I can sleep downstairs and I heard the bang. We kept hearing these loud bangs. We didn't know where they were coming from. The first thing we logically thought about is an intruder. Somebody's on our house for some reason. Somebody's pounding and stomping on, on the roof of our house at night. Someone's trying to break in. Let's check it out. It was getting to the point where I was getting scared because if everybody else heard it, then there's something there. It's okay. It stopped. Whatever it was. I'm gonna go get the boys. Wait right here. Okay? feeling of someone behind me.
one by one, the Johnson children are being targeted by a mysterious entity. Two hands were on my back. In that very moment when I felt it, I was terrified. We heard a cry out. We came in, and there she was, very upset, very frightened about it. Sweetie! Something, something pushed me, two hands. I don't, I don't know. I realized at that point that whatever I came in contact with was evil. Now it had hurt somebody, it had pushed my sister down. What was it capable of? What did it want? It was becoming more invasive. It was hurting people. For months, the kids have been trying to convince their parents that their house is haunted. Do you believe us now? Everything that's been happening is real. You kids, you just have a wild imagination. But then how do you explain what we all just experienced? Well, you heard it too. Our house is haunted. And if you aren't gonna do anything about it, then I will. Let's all just go back to bed. All right, it's been a long night. My brother and I realized that if anything was going to be done to stop this activity, we couldn't explain. It was up to us. My parents didn't really believe it or they didn't want to believe it. So we had to do something about it. We had to take control of this. Looking for answers, Carl and Keith seek out paranormal experts. My brother and I joined a paranormal investigating group based at Rhode Island College. We wanted to know what other people were experiencing. During one seminar, they meet a budding investigator who believes he can help the Johnson family. He has blood ties to Lorraine and Ed Warren, the paranormal couple who inspired the movie The Conjuring. My name is John Zaffis, and I've been involved with the paranormal for 43 years. Being involved with the paranormal field, I was a very fortunate young man. Ed and Lorraine Warren are my aunt and uncle, and I had worked with them for many, many years. And that was a golden opportunity. I appreciate you coming. I hope we can put these stories to rest once and for all. I can't say my parents were altogether receptive about his visitation. My mom advised my father, why don't you let them do what they're going to do? Maybe they'll find something. Maybe they'll be able to help. It couldn't hurt. So I understand Carl, Keith, and Cindy have been experiencing activity in the house. When did the activity increase? I guess when we started talking with Sylvia. Sylvia? Yeah, through the spirit board. Carl even saw her. A spirit board? It's a game I got him for Christmas. I even had one as a girl. The spirit board, it came very popular in the 70s. Everybody was purchasing them. You would get them as Christmas gifts, not realizing that they were opening up the doors to the spirit realm. I hate to break it to you, but it isn't just a game. When you use a spirit board, you can open a door to the other side. It's very dangerous. It's not the board itself and the game that causes the problem. It's the individuals. We're the catalyst. We bring the spirit in. I need to have a look around. Is that OK? Sure.
Although John is not psychic, he attempts to detect the presence of a spirit by feeling for drafts and temperature changes. There was definitely this heavy presence in one of the rooms. Suddenly, John senses a female spirit. That was Sylvia. She had a long gray dress on and she had a, a bun. The spirit appears to be in distress, as if she has something urgent to communicate. Sylvia was definitely trying to warn the children. Why? What is she trying to warn them of? John finds himself drawn to the cellar. It felt very heavy. I felt a lot of dread. I felt like something really did not want me down in that basement. Visit TLC.com. Paranormal investigator John Zaffis has just encountered two entities in the Johnson home, and one is not friendly. That wasn't Sylvia that was causing the haunting down there. I definitely feel that it was something demonic. Carl, you were right in thinking that Sylvia was trying to contact you. I was? So you're saying that this Sylvia is real? Yes. It's a real human spirit. But she has been trying to warn you all about a demon. A demon? When he said the word demon, it was then something formidable. It was no longer fun and games. It was something unholy, something dark and hateful. Hearing this from John made everything real from my parents at that point. It all crystallized for them. How can this be true? Mr. and Ms. Johnson, it is true. These things exist. I believe when the activity became more aggressive, that was the demon trying to attack your family. How did it get here? It was just as I feared. Both entities came through the spirit board. By Carl and his sister communicating with the spirit board, they not only allowed Sylvia to come through, but they allowed something in on a demonic level, a very negative level. I told you both it was dangerous. I was rather upset that my brother and sister didn't readily take my advice about the dangers of communicating with the spirit board. We were just kids, and we got this board, and we had no idea. 
you know, what was going to happen. The family wastes no time finding an expert. In the name of Jesus Christ, and by the power of his blood, we contacted a priest from a local Episcopal church. He was gracious enough to come and perform a blessing of the home. He offered Christian prayers and holy petitions that the demon should leave that house, should be expelled and not return. God, I pray your blessing upon this house and upon everyone that lives here. It's over. They're gone. The spirit of Sylvia and the demonic entity are gone. In that moment, I felt like we had our house back. I felt like whatever spirit was demonic that was there no longer had power over us to attack us ever again. It was like a dark cloud had lifted. I felt at peace. From that day forward, the teens make a pact never to use the spirit board again. The family is able to resume life as usual without any further paranormal experiences. The years went on. Of course, we grew up. Eventually, we moved out of the house. We got married. My parents continued living on in the house for many years afterwards. They had a peaceful existence living in that house for the remainder of their time there. But their brush with the paranormal has changed them forever. My brother and I went on to become paranormal investigators, very established. We are demonologists. We have been able to help a great number of people in similar situations. We work together to this day to try to bring awareness that the dangers of spirit communication are a reality. This experience showed me that there is more to this world than meets the eye, that everything is not as it seems. <laughs>